welcome back to another episode of Sherlock Holmes vs. Jack the Ripper. Let's get back into it. Okay, we're gonna go investigate some thongays, I think. Thongays? Is that what you say? There's a cat meowing. It's weird. Let's see, what do I look? I'm gonna go... The church passage, maybe? Which way? Which, which is the church passage? So we're at the square, so we should be right there at that door. So the church, the church passage would be, I think, this way. I'm gonna actually grab this. Take the lantern, Watson. This is Mitre Street, from where Watkins, the constable who found the body, came. Where's this way, actually? I'm gonna investigate something. What is this way? Church passage. Church passage. It must be opposite the Imperial Club at 16 to 17 Duke Street. Let's go to the end of this lane, Watson. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. There's Abraham. Hello, you must be Abraham Solomonovich, am I right? Yes, that's me. But I know you. You brought a lad to my place to take care of a cat, and I loaned you my mask. That's me. May I present? Dr. Watson, of course. Delighted. And you? I have known for a few days that you are a detective by the name of Sherlock Holmes. That is, right. is that so? He is correct. You don't miss a thing, do you? It was the children who gave me away. Am I right? Uh, they didn't want to, but I gained their confidence by offering them a small comb and half a cake. They made a good deal out of it, so I don't blame them. However, mm -hmm. I must request, as a personal favor, that you do not reveal my identity. You have my word. Curiosity is just killing me, as you may have guessed. Would it be breaking an oath to confide in me no, I don't think the so. nature of the investigation that you are leading? No. Church passage. Does this spot where we are now in Mitre Square mean anything to you? A demon lives in this city, Mr. Holmes. Yep. These so unmentionable the acts degrade the human race and put the Jewish community in terrible danger. Lots of rumors are circulating, but they are but rumors. Mm -hmm. I see you're leaving the Imperial Club. It's a stone's throw away from Mitre Square, and the two recent That's murders were most probably discussed in there. Do you know if anyone if from the club did, saw uh, or did, heard did, did, anything did. that night? Yes, Mr. Holmes. That night, three members of our club saw a woman talking to a man at Ooh. the very spot where we are standing. A few minutes before the body was found, at the end of this passage. Fantastic, Holmes. Calm yourself, Watson. There is nothing at the moment to suggest it was the victim. Uh, can we meet these members? I am afraid that won't be possible. As soon as the police heard the evidence of these Makes men, sense. they were sworn to silence. I understand. But you are working for the good, and I must tell you what I know. Makes One sense. of the three men, my friend Joseph, left that night with two other members of the Imperial Club, Harry and another Joseph. It was around 1.35 a.m., perhaps a bit earlier, when Joseph, uh, not my friend, but the other, the Aldgate Butcher, exited. He saw a man and a woman in discussion at this very spot where we are. These men must have been about 16 feet away from the couple. That's about right. So, Joseph, the butcher, said to the other two, while pointing at the couple, Look, I don't like going home alone when I see this kind of people here. Makes My friend sense. Joseph looked at them without noticing anything strange and didn't understand what he meant. 
They had the look oh, of two rather unkempt people, but no more than that. Testimonies? After the murder, did these three men tell the police what they had seen? Not quite. Harry stated that he hadn't seen the couple. As for Joseph, the butcher, even though he was the one who commented on them and pointed them out, said that he couldn't remember anything except that the man was about three inches taller than so the woman. Five, three. Who was five feet tall, no more. Okay. My friend Joseph, on the other hand, did his best to cooperate with the police. Description of the man. And what did your friend Joseph say? What did this man and woman look like? The man must have been 30 years old, about 5 foot oh, 7 five inches, seven. light complexion, yep. and a fair moustache. He wore a loose, dark jacket, a grey cap, Mixing. and a red scarf around his neck. But he said that he only saw him for a brief instant, and it would be impossible to recognize him. And the woman? He only saw her from behind. She had her hand on the man's stomach and seemed to be pushing him. He said that he remembered that she was small, was wearing a black jacket and a black bonnet. After his testimony, the police took him to see the clothing of the deceased and Joseph said that they looked identical to those of the woman he had seen. Like I already said, he only okay. glanced at the two That's as he was headed with the others in the direction of Oldgate. One final question. The Imperial Club is a Jewish club, isn't that correct? Indeed. Thank you for your help, Mr. Solomonovich. Bah, it was nothing. We must at all costs prevent this demon from striking again. Mm -hmm. And the police seem to have some difficulty in doing that. I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Holmes. Okay, so let's go back now. You gotta keep running. Let's go back to the other street. Nothing of interest here. Okay, so we go down this. This is passage right back here. This dark and narrow passage leads to St. James's Place. Well, let's find the spot where Edow's body was discovered. Nothing of interest here. Okay. I see. Watson, we are now in the exact okay. spot where poor Edows tragically ended her days. Interesting. This spot is very dark, Holmes. That is probably why our murderer chose it. Makes sense. Okay. okay let's see. Let's look around. Let's actually... Pills. Do these objects spread out by the victim remind us of anything, Watson? Yeah. There we go. I got that correct in the first try. Okay. Somehow I got that correct. A thimble is located right beside one of the victim's hands, just like Chapman's sachet of pills and Stride's pastels. Okay, let's go check that out. Let's go back to the deductions. And let's go down to the bomb again. Okay, we got that correct. So let's look at the, um... Part of this apron is missing. We will follow up on that shortly. Okay, let's go back to deductions. No. So her killer is unorganized. I see. What else am I... The inside okay. of the thighs is clean. Uh, once again, there were no sexual relations between the victim and her murderer. Okay. The main incision goes from the sternum all the way down to the groin. The murderer opened this abdomen as so if it, it were an animal it carcass. Might be a, butcher. a kidney was removed. The a uterus kidney. was removed. So all... So some things that help with baby making, right? I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, I, I can figure that one out easily. Oh. Okay. These intestines were pulled out altogether to grant access to the abdomen. Intriguing. The head is turned towards the left. The murderer must have been on the right side of his victim. Let's look at her from the front. Uh. There is but one wound, Watson. It goes from the left side and descends in a slight oblique towards the right side. The eyelids were cut off. There is but one wound. Okay. The cheeks were slashed to make them thinner. The cheeks were slashed to make... Let me see. Deduction. Okay, um... Okay, let's see, I must be missing something else now. Okay, let me see what's underneath the intestines very quickly. The head is turned towards the left. The okay. nose was cut. Nose was cut. Okay. My goodness, Holmes, it was a slaughter. No. Understand, Watson, that our killer had neither the time nor the conditions to bother the nicetids. Okay. He had no more than seven or eight minutes That's at most to kill the gruesome. woman, open her up, and all the while in total darkness. Holmes, it's a woman, a poor victim you're talking that about. That was very gruesome. Consider all the time this man lost and the risks that he actually took by cutting the victim's face and the lower abdomen in around 20 precise spots, especially the lungs and the liver. These attacks, which I considered gratuitous, are, in fact, nothing of the sort, and have as much sense as the removal of the organs. Watson, we must now consult our timeline. We began in Dutfield's... Okay. 1.30 a.m. 1.30 a.m. PC Watkins didn't see the corpse while on his rounds. If P.C. Watkins did his mm -hmm. rounds properly, and there is no reason to doubt this was the case, as he discovered the corpse a quarter of an hour later, the murder hadn't yet taken place, and there was no one in Mitre that Square, is true. unless they were hidden among the shadows. Enter Mitre Square via Mitre Street, Watson, and stop and try to see me with the lantern. I will be where poor Edow's corpse was. Go see. Oh. Uh, stop and try to see him with lantern. I see you, Holmes. Perfect, Watson. Let's okay. look at our timeline, Watson. Very good, Watson. Okay. Thus, we can categorically state that the murder had not yet occurred at half one. Makes sense. One. Actually, can I go finish the um, deductions very quickly? So I can do that.
Okay, let me um go back to the time timeline now. Timeline. Okay, uh, one thirty-five. One thirty-five a.m. A man and a woman are arguing at the entrance of Church Passage. The man came from Aldgate. Okay, and then we go put one forty-two. There we go. 1.42 a.m. P.C. Harvey arrives in Mitre Square. It should be noted, Watson, that the constable didn't enter Mitre Square. He could not have seen the corpse lying on the ground. But would he have been able to see a man sitting or standing? Go to the church passage entrance, oh, then come back I, I and try to see now. me while holding your lantern. I will stay at the spot where the victim was discovered. Okay. So let me go to the beginning of it. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to walk seriously and see what happens. You can clearly, you, you can barely see him though. I see you, Holmes. Uh -huh. You had to proceed into the square in order to see me, something Harvey didn't do. It is possible that ah, the killer was that still makes there. Sense. 1.42 a.m. P.C. Harvey arrives at Mitre Square, but does not go in. The murderer may well have still been there. Okay. 1.44, the body is discovered. 1.44 a.m., the body is discovered. Let's put the murder of poor Eddowes on the timeline, Watson. Okay. 1.35 and 1.42 a.m., yep. the murder would appear to have taken place between these times, that is to say, within seven minutes. Makes Agreed, sense. Holmes. But does this really prove that our killer had the time yes. to perpetrate these yes, two murders? Is. Let's look at our timeline, Watson. There, Watson. We are now certain that the murderer really had the time to commit these two murders. Incredible! This spot is making me nauseous. Can we not head back, Holmes? We certainly can't, Watson. We have one final point to address. Do you remember the piece of white apron that was missing just now? It was found just a few Ooh, steps away from here, sense. at the entrance of a building. That's where we must go. Okay, where am I going? Let's go. Oh, there we are. I, I saw the thing. There's the spot, Watson. By night, Goulston Street is deathly silent, which will permit us to carry out a fair few experiments. Let's find the entrance where the piece of the victim's apron and the mysterious chalk message were found. Look at these signs, Watson. We are in the Jewish High Street. Okay, so Jewish High Street. Ah, oh, there There's it is. There's the spot where the apron and the message were found by PC Long. Now, let's recreate the scene. Remember, Watson, it was raining that night. Find me something with which to mimic raindrops hitting this wall while I write something with my chalk. The Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. But what does it mean? A uh, deduction. Okay, I control. Have you found something for us to pour water from? Find a container and some water. Okay, let me go to the deductions. Or was that? Was that? Oh, yeah. Okay, wait, did I get conclusions? Oh. Yeah. Is that all? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. I see. Okay. So I found some water. Okay. That may come in handy. Who knows? I see. Where could I go? I think that I may go. come in handy. Who knows? Yeah, there's a wooden pole here. I think I can grab. An old wooden pole. A merchant probably threw it out. A watering can. That's what ah. I need. Uh -huh. A watering can. That's what I need. I but thought I, I had. A watering can. That. What? Uh. I got a watering can. So let's go get this water now. Get the watering can. And then let's go back to homes. Have you found something for us to pull water? The Jews are not the men that will... I didn't mean that. that, that oh, okay. Yes. Yes, I have homes. Okay, cool. And now I can do if that. If this message were written by the killer, then it would have been lying in this entrance for up to 35 minutes before being discovered. Let's find out in what state it must have been. This message could not have withstood an entire night in the rain. Makes sense, yeah. During the investigations carried out on the night of the double murder, PC Hulse inspected the entrances of this street around 2.20 a.m. and confirmed to have seen nothing out of the ordinary. At 2.55 a.m., 35 minutes later, PC Long found Catherine Edal's piece of apron and the message in chalk. This message would not have withstood a whole so night in the rain, as had I continued to water it for a little longer, I would certainly have erased it. It was written, therefore, at the moment when the piece of apron oh. was dealt. This substantiates PC Hulse's statement, which stated he had seen neither of these Makes during his rounds. Sense. After its discovery, it was guarded and protected from the rain, which was subsiding, which explains why it was still legible when it was erased at half five. My dear Watson, okay. when you met PC Smith on his rounds in the street, where was he? On in the, the middle of the road. In the middle of the road. In the middle of the road, Holmes, without a shadow of a doubt. Good. You will go down the street with your lantern as if you were a policeman on patrol, using Smith's position as a guide. As soon as you see the entrance where I use the watering can, tell me if you see anything. Okay. There, Holmes. From here, I can see something written. Can you read it? No. Do you see the white rag, Watson? I see something on the ground, but I'm not sure if it's what you were talking okay. about. PC Long, who found the piece of apron, was examining the interior of the entrances, and yet nobody would have predicted that this piece of material would be discovered on the very night of the murder by a policeman on patrol. What are you trying to get at, Holmes? 
Let's look at this message on the wall, Watson. The Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. In other words, the Jews were possibly blamed for nothing, the man's but poor. that will no longer be the case. Reading this message naturally begs one question. What would that be, Watson? Why? Indeed, Watson, why? For what reason would one have the right to blame the Jews in the future? Remember, this stride was killed near a club for socialist Jews, Edals, not far from the synagogue and the imperial club. And finally, this piece of apron dropped here. This building is occupied by Jewish families. The killer really did go oh, out of his way to incriminate the Jews living in the area. It's a bit obvious, Holmes. Yes, but with the rumors, Watson, the author of this message would have received a response to his strategy. You are right, Holmes. So perhaps it's a good thing this message was erased. Whoever took the decision to do this is a man of great wisdom and courage. Let's return to Baker Street, Watson. I have some pipes to smoke to help me think more clearly. Let's go back to Baker Street. Home sweet home. That's a lot of notes. Okay, um, let's get to the map. Let's do that. I had nightmares all night, Holmes. As for you, I bet you didn't get a wink of sleep, did you? It's this chalk message business, isn't it? Among other things. And this lunatic is still running free. If only we, we knew have a what he good looked like. Description but we do here. know, Watson. We have a fairly uh -huh. accurate description. Yes. I must have missed an episode of your adventures, Holmes. Not only have I heard you discredit the value of our eyewitnesses, but the few descriptions we do have don't seem to correspond. An inaccurate account can regain its value if we can discover why and what extent the truth must be rewritten. We've learned a great many Ooh, things tonight, that and is I'm true. able to tell I you what our man looks like. Really? Yes, and we're going to need a few things, Watson. Find me three mannequins, my workers' costume, my three full wigs, one of your worn garments. Yes, that can be used for the workman's outfit, and one of your old suits. Oh, and my deer stalker, the one I never wear, but everyone seems to think I wear day and night. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave this episode off, my ghost. We have figured out a lot of things. We gotta go find some garments next time. And we also have to go find mannequins and a lot of other stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye!